Ann here and today I want to talk to you about um, October Art Challenges and there are so many of them out there. Um, some have been popular and then gone by the wayside but it has been and very enduring for October to be a month of, of some sort of art challenge with daily prompts and this year I am going to participate in Peachtober. She has a fun list of prompts and I'll, I'll put a link to those um, down below but through the years I've participated in in many art challenges of, of all kinds some of my own making some you know were designed by other people but I have learned some things that help me be more successful in that so that's what I want to talk about today is getting myself prepared and set up for success. Now one thing that I want to do from the get-go is define success because I am not so rigid that I have to be have a wonderful illustration for each day of the month because I I know I can't keep up with that so so I guess number one is to set some realistic goals for myself um, I do however want to come out of it with several uh, good illustrations. I want to practice doing some cute illustrations that's a little bit of a change up from my normal art that I make. Um, I know that my time is somewhat limited because I do have several other art projects and responsibilities that I need to meet in the month of October as well. So I'm Number one is just give myself some grace and some leeway and not be too unrealistic about it. So the next thing um, my that I do is to write down the prompts where, the, where they will remind me. So I have them written in my in my daily planner. I also have them written in my day free. This is my work planner. So um, I have written them... Um, monthly this in this is just my work planner so I mainly am planning videos and work things here but each day of the month I have whatever the prompt for that day is so it's right there handy I don't have to you know hunt around for my prompt list I also have it in my daily planner where I schedule everything um, I have a list in there and then I've also written I need to put a tab on it um, I've also dedicated a page in my, this is the day free Hobonichi, and um, I use it as my work planner. And so I have a day designated for Peachtober in this, and I have the list of prompts, but also a little short description of my idea for that prompt. So I've also done that, so having the prompt um, front and center and in front of me easily um, at all times I think will really help me to have that. I also have um, done it in my sketchbook. This is just my kind of rough and tumble anything goes sketchbook. It's where I test out pens and paints and materials and do rough sketches and ideas and so in it I have some pages designated for my rough ideas for this and I have gone through the whole list in advance because she she put this list out one of the reasons I chose Peachtober was because she put her prompt list out I don't know maybe a month ahead of time and so I think that's really helpful to just kind of plan ahead for it and so I've actually gone and done some sketches um, for each day now these you know I was all excited and I did a full page I realized I didn't need that much space. Some of them do not have a lot on them yet. Um, others, you know, I just kind of like whatever came to mind. Um, and so it might evolve a lot. It, the finished one might be nothing like this. And I don't know if you can see them very good. They are in pencil, so they're not very um, fully formed. But I have at least um, gotten these down and started some pencil marks even if it was just to write out the word 
and that kind of gets the the ideas stirring and so that is uh, here I have that to refer to like I said my the end result may be nothing like these but it just gives me a starting place and so now that I've gone through all the words for the month um, those are all kind of circling around in my head and I you know c come across ideas as I go I do really like day one is B and I do really like these little bees, so I might use those somehow. Um, so once I have uh, kind of the sketches started, then I kind of formulate a plan or the parameters of the prompt for me. So sh she has provided the prompt words, but then there's lots of leeway in what I do with that. So I have kind of set some themes for myself. Um, one is I am after an illustrative look and I want it to be cute, cute illustrations, something like you might find in a children's book or something like that. Um, I might deviate from that here and there, but that's kind of primarily the feel I want. I've also thought of a color scheme that I want to use, kind of um, some oranges and blues and and again I might deviate from that if there's you know good reason to but I'm gonna kind of try to stick with a color scheme through my illustrations I am also going to use um, acrylic gouache uh, that's the material I want to use I'm a mixed media artist so not often do I just paint something but I think it would be kind of fun and refreshing for me to do that so I think at least mostly I'm going to stick to one medium acrylic gouache. I might also mix that with some watercolor, but I think I'm going to, at least at this point, um, steer away from collage and all the uh, other things that I usually use. And then um, another thing that I decision that I made pre-made was um, that I wanted to use, do it on 11 by 14. Paper. So if I do have an illustration that I really like, it's something that could be matte and framed or scanned and uh, postcards made or whatever with. So the um, I could have used loose leaf paper, but I kind of liked the idea. I've been doing a lot of themed sketchbooks this year, and I kind of have enjoyed that. It holds everything together in one place. You don't have these paper scattering around. So I, for this project, um, decided I really like the Strathmore Mixed Media paper. And so I decided that would be a good paper to work on. So I got this book. It's a hardback, but it's an 11 by 14. I don't have many sketchbooks that are that size. But if I decide to actually cut the illustrations out of here when I'm done, I can do so. And I have a decent sized um, piece. It is only 90 pound paper, so it's not like intimidatingly nice paper like a it's not like fancy watercolor paper or anything like that it's just a good workable paper I found this on some like some special deal on Amazon or something it um, seemed like it was a good price but um, you know one of the rare things that comes along so um, I did purchase this it isn't quite enough um, it's 48 pages, but that's counting front and back, and I am just wanting to do use one side. So um, by the time I use the one side, it doesn't have quite enough for all 31 days, so I will have to use some extra um, paper for the last several days. But that's okay. I will do that. Most of it will fit in here. Um, so I decided that um, I would, from my sketch, I have, this is a, a uh, printable from one of my Patreon uh, digital sheets, and I will fill that out. I'm thinking this paper is actually different. It's like an end paper, and, but I'm thinking maybe a little photo or print of the finished pieces would be kind of fun to have here all together, so I'm kind of reserving that for that. 
I do always keep these so that I know what kind of um, journal it was later. Um, so I will cut this off and probably glue it in here somewhere. Um, so that's where I start. And then I have actually done some of my pre preliminary designs in here. I don't have all 31 done, but I do have several, and that'll just give me a jump start. I sketched with pencil, but then I did use um, colored pencil to draw on top of that, because, and then erased away the pencil, or most of it, because... Um, I think the colored pencil, it's kind of a new thing for me, but I think it will be fun to, when I paint with the gouache, um, if I use watercolor, it will be a very slight resist, which could be fun, and I'm just kind of curious to see how the gouache works with that, so I just thought that would be a fun way to to deal with my initial drawing. So some of them I just use like this. I actually use different colors of colored pencil, but then I have several in here that I actually used a rainbow um, colored pencil, you know, one of those rainbow pencils, and I actually like that better because then I'm not um, worried about what color things should be. I'm just getting the, the drawing in ready to paint in. So what I end up, once I've done this sketch, this drawing, you know, it's sort of like a coloring book situation that I'll be painting in the image. So that's a huge help to have some of those designs done. As you can see, this one doesn't have a whole lot of resemblance to the sketch that I made. Let's find that first one. But, uh, actually it's not that far off of that one. Um... But I do, and I do think as I paint it, I'm going to, you know, look more at these bees, perhaps, for reference, because I do really like those. These are kind of a more simple version. Um, but I got my encapsulated um, idea, and I will uh, be painting that. Another thing that I'm not necessarily doing in every illustration, but I am interested in doing quite a bit, is like a night sky scene. So I have that one. This one, the word was cosmos. And I think I'm going to, so this would be the back of this one. So I think I'm going to put like the day and the prompt on the, on the back side. Make note of that somehow. I have not done that yet. Um, so this is cosmos. This one was grub, and, you know, in my sketch, I kind of decided what I wanted a grub to look like. Um, so here I have um, my figuring out how I want a grub to look, and then here I have the little actual illustration with the grub in it. So here just are some of my... This one was sprig. I don't want to ruin these for you by, like, you know, making ideas be stuck in your head, but you get the idea. Um, so I have several of those done in advance. And then I'm also making plans um, for my future self um, in that I need to set aside some paint time, you know, some time to actually do this. I'm not, I don't. Uh, I think I shall, will be able to work on it every day, but maybe every couple of days. And um, again, I give myself permission to not get every single one done. And I'm not, I may just skip some, or I may do just like real simple little illustrations for some, or maybe what I've done in the sketchbook will count for that day. We'll see. Um, I want to be realistic about it because that's what will help me succeed. So there's my plan. Um, I want to put something fun on here. Maybe one of these illustrations will come out good enough to be a sticker and then I can stick that on the front. I don't know. We'll see. But that's my plans for Peachtober and for any art challenge. Uh, just ways to set myself up for success and um, avoid failure. So let me know in the comments if you're doing an October Art Challenge and what you're doing and what, how you make sure that you can have some success. Now I'm just going to start some music while I finish out this illustration for the first day.
Thank you.